feeling right now about your soccer team? Well, it's obviously quite satisfying that uh, Mr. Brooks has been found guilty and held accountable for his actions. Um, as many of these uh, victims have said, this is a, a joyous day for that reason. It's also uh, the point where we hope everyone can move on from. Uh, the support that we've gotten as this case wore on day after day uh, was tremendous, and um, we're, we're very relieved. I guess that's the best word is relief. Hillary? I mean, legally it changed our strategy certainly because um, if there's an appeal, we have to do, he can make a mistake in the courtroom and get a new trial and um, we have to pay the price for that, we the state and we the victims. So it's changed our strategy in that we had to make sure, and Judge Doro did as well, the record was very thorough, very complete and we didn't miss anything. Um, it, but as far as handling the actual court proceedings, we felt very, very offended by his behavior, his disrespect of the court, the decorum, the families, um, his insulting the judge, his challenging the judge. That's not the way our system is designed. That's, that was intentional on his part. We truly believe that. Um, he did everything he can except claim that the dog ate his homework. And um, he tried to turn this into his story. Let's talk about Mr. Brooks and his family. And we just kept redirecting it back to the real focus here is our families, our victims, our community, and his responsibility for this destruction. 58. Um, again, it wasn't a difficult case factually, and I don't mean to sound, um, you know, overly confident in that, but this case was unique because the activity was videotaped, right? Um, and so, whereas most cases we have to rely on eyewitness accounts or other ways to prove the case, we had videograph evidence of his behavior all up and down that crime scene and throughout the neighborhood. So that way, um, it wasn't difficult. Again, the difficulty and the challenges we faced was um, what nonsense was gonna come out of his mouth next. And uh, we were anticipating much of what would come next and being ready legally with case law and legal authority to be able to respond to that. So I think that was the hardest thing the investigation was so thorough, so well done, that we knew the facts were solid. It was just uh, making sure the record and the presentation was done legally accurate. We'll do Fox Local. So what went into your decision to perhaps minimize the number of direct witnesses that went up on that stand? I mean, mm -hmm. I wonder, did you expect any of these answers, and if that went into your decision? Yes, it did. Um, so obviously we didn't know until very late that he'd be representing himself. Um, but we as a team set out from day one, and this was months and months ago when he still had attorneys, we vowed we would not put children on the stand. Absolutely. It wasn't necessary. Again, there were plenty of other ways to tell this story without asking a child to testify in a courtroom and relive this very, very extreme tragic situation. So that was a commitment we made as a team months ago, and we stuck by that. Certainly, as we learned his antics, we reevaluated and we and um, we would discuss it every night as a team is who are we going to use tomorrow and and do we really need this person because um, we were so again not personally offended but professionally offended that he would insult the process and and insult the victims, accuse them of financial gain for their testimony, things like that. It was just so. Um, offensive that we we definitely were conscious of that in our decision making and how can we minimize this uh, for the best of everyone but still uh, provide a compelling story. So yes, it, it did definitely play a factor. Court TV. Thank you so much. Um, Ms. Bacher, 
there were so many different ceremonies inside the courtroom every day, sitting back there in the booth. Mm -hmm. How much did that motivate you and your team and how you presented your evidence and your closing arguments and convincing them? And have you been able to speak to any of them at Berkeley and maybe discuss with them that day? Yes. Um, the, the motivation we received from those families um, was tremendous. And we knew, again, from the point when Mr. Brooks chose to represent himself, this was going to be a marathon. We talked about that many times as a team, that um, we just need to keep moving forward every day, whatever that looked like. But what motivated us was these families that are behind me, a lot of them. Um, and we thought of those mothers and fathers sitting in hospital rooms with their children and the ongoing care that they're still physically healing from and certainly emotionally healing from and that motivated us tremendously but you couldn't meet a nicer group of people I mean that's the thing is I'm not surprised having lived in Waukesha for 35 years um, that they're good people here and they would ask us, how are you doing? Do you guys need anything? Which was really phenomenal. They were a tremendous group of people to work for, and it was our honor to represent them and be a voice for them in the court. Okay. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Um, you actually came through the Waldorf Theater with a lifeline and then the Waldorf Theater with a lifeline. Uh, what was that like? Uh, what do you do to go that route? Uh, that was strategic for the appeal, to be very blunt. Um, I wasn't throwing a lifeline to Mr. Brooks. I really had no interest in hearing what he had to say because I heard all of his lies and stories so far. So that was just trying to do what was legally required at the moment. And I frankly wasn't sure it was going to work because he was so uh, difficult with Judge Doro. But in the end, it did work. He, he got to blurt out what he wanted to blurt, and then the judge struck that from the record and we were able to move on. So I was glad that that was the result, but we talked about it uh, at the prosecution table and, and came up with that idea of let's offer this, um, again, just to protect the record for the appeal. Jim. Again, his absolute disrespect and um, dishonor to the victims, the community, and the court process. I'll do Brian from the Freeman, and then two more for, we'll do CVS, and then, we'll, we'll, and then oh, where are you from? I'll do Brian. Okay, those are the last three, so go, Brian, you got one? Uh, there has been some discussion between some jurors that have announced that uh, perhaps the decision to represent himself is grounds for an appeal. Have you just heard at all about that? Well, Mr. Brooks has a right to an appeal. Every defendant does. And I fully expect him to take advantage of his rights as a convicted defendant in this case. I am very confident in the record that Judge Doro made and his decision to represent himself. Yes. Go ahead. Um, we were not. Uh, we talked about it last night, and frankly, I, I know a lot of you were here too. We were all, by the time we got to that 8 o'clock mark, we were exhausted. And when they said they wanted to go home and rest, we were thankful, quite frankly, because we all felt the same way. It's, it's such an emotionally draining day. Um, and to get through all that and the nonstop banter from Mr. Brooks, it's taxing. You all witnessed it yourself. Um, so... We were grateful. We thought they gave it good thought because they went out around 6.30. Their dinner was there immediately, right? So uh, jurors are human beings. They get a nice meal. They got a little time to talk, and then they decided, let's rest. Let's sleep on it. Always a good um, option uh, for decision-making for anybody, right? Um, get a good night's sleep, sleep on it, and come back the next day. And then, um, you know, they worked again for about another hour this morning, and with the uh, quality of the investigation in this case, um, we think the verdict was uh, fair. The timing was spot on. So, go ahead. There's a lot of people who aren't here today, of course, but a lot of people who are also afraid on the day of the break who aren't here. Um, in closing, what do you want to say to them just after the process? 
Well, I hope um, some of you caught the flavor of that. You cannot imagine until you saw some of those videos how horrific it would have been to stand there and watch that, um, especially when your children and, and some of these witnesses testified to that, they couldn't find their children, right? Um, and that's not just people who were struck. That There was many, many citizens who could not find their own child for a period of time. So just uh, unbelievable. But once the car went through and everybody had that initial, the way the citizens of this community punched in, there's, there's no other word for it. The nurses, the doctors, the EMTs, the paramedics, anybody who knew anything about how to apply a Band-Aid walked into that street and treated those people. So um, that was another source of strength for us, right, is uh, if they could do that, we can, we can get through this. Thank you. As we move on to the next phases of, this, of the judicial process, I'm sure that people will be readily available to provide comment as we get into, we have a court hearing on Monday at 1 o'clock, I believe, for scheduling, and I think then we're going to go into the sentencing phase and we'll know more about that. People here uh, behind me will make themselves available for you, I'm pretty much sure, as this goes on. But as of right now, we're going to end it and uh, allow people to be with their families, and uh, definitely this prosecution team needs some much-needed rest and some time uh, away from this courthouse. So thank you all very much for being here today. Uh, if we could make a line so I can allow these people up. Thank you. It was more so at your camera.